Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Pleasantville Presbyterian Church. I want to thank you for your thoughts and prayers these last few weeks as my family had a medical emergency out of state. We are grateful to be in a new chapter of recovery back in New York and thank you for your support all along the way. For this week, the session of our church, our leadership, has arranged a pastor to lead worship in the sanctuary. And online, we're going to share with you here some pieces of worship from a past Lenten service, as well as some new prayers. Thank you again, and we are grateful for your support as we navigate these waters and expect that next week we will return to our regular format for worship. Come, let us worship our living God. Please join us in the prayer of confession. We await your word, holy God, in the words of others who have walked with you and now share their story with us. On mountaintops of aspirations and low valleys of despair, they have sensed a presence they had no word to describe. May we hear all you would have us hear in this time and in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, hear the good news. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Peace to everybody. May the peace be with you. May the peace be with you. 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 Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. Good morning, church, and welcome to the children's sermon. You know, today I got to invite you on a little something because I've been kind of like, I've been on this like quest slash search. I've been feeling kind of thirsty. Uh, thirsty for kind of like fulfillment. Uh, it's hard to describe, like meaning. Um, I'm like looking for some reassurance too. I'm really thirsty. So I'm looking around. I just haven't been able to find like the answer or like the feeling that's going to help quench this thirst or satisfy this thirst. Uh, I, you know, I, I looked on Amazon, couldn't find it, couldn't buy it, couldn't buy it in a store. I looked around this room, I couldn't find it. I think we might need to go on a little quest. You want to go on a quest with me? All right, let's go on a little quest. So I'm, we're going to go... I'm going to just keep looking for this. Let's like look around. No, I don't see it over here. I don't see it over there. Let's keep looking. I think we need to go around. No. I got to tell you guys, sometimes it's difficult to find. How am I going to figure out how to, how to quench this? Wait, 
I see something over here. Look at this. Oh, not bad. This stuff is free. It might have an answer to my question and my feeling. Let me just grab one of these. Whoa. If you can't see this, what it says on the side of it says God's promises. I'm going to try it. That's pretty good. You know, it kind of feels like faith. It feels like, like belief in God. It even feels like some mercy. This is wonderful. And it's free. This is pretty awesome. You know, I'll tell you what. I've been looking for this for a long time, and I had to search for it a little bit, and that's okay. But sometimes we got to search for the things that are most meaningful. Kind of reminds me of a story we learn in Isaiah 55 that people who are thirsty are looking for water. If you're thirsty, if you're trying to find something that, that's fulfilling or that you can't just quench it with, say, you know, throwing money at a problem. You can't quench it by just trying to overcome it yourself. Sometimes you got to look for something. And sometimes God is the only thing that can provide it. And interestingly, he'll provide it for free to anyone. Kind of like these mugs in the background. And in Isaiah, we learn that actually it's God's word and his promises that are the only thing that will fulfill this need, this want that we have on a daily basis. We're looking for direction, for we're looking for meaning. We have to go find it, and it's only in God that we can find it. We learn this in Isaiah, and we also learn that it's trusting and believing and having faith in God that are the only things that will fulfill. So, will we always have some thirst? I think so. And maybe that's good news, and maybe that's bad news. But the great news is that if we search it out and look for God and find things that are not of this world, like his promises to us of everlasting life, I think we're going to be all right. And I think that we're going to be able to quench that thirst. So let's rely on God's word to help fulfill this need. Let's close in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for putting this need, this want, this thirst for you in our lives. We pray that we can continue to go on a mission and a search and a quest every single day and realize that when we come to the end of it, that what it is that we want is free and free abundance and that you are going to provide every day, any day, and abundantly. In your name we say. Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is from Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 3. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread? And your labor on what does not satisfy. Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen, that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God.
Our scripture reading for this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, we'll save it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I was early sitting in the choir room waiting for choir rehearsal to start, having come directly from work that day. Eleanor came in and began pulling banners out of the closet and putting away the pieces of cloth that had been the evidence of how we celebrated Epiphany in that congregation. I walked over to see if I could help and she said, no, there's not much to this. We just have this one Lenten banner. Look at this. All these sad pictures. No light breaking in, no stars, just the symbols that make up the walk to the cross. This is the one time of the year I don't like decorating the sanctuary. Is that how we feel? Is Lent the bad news time of the year? In our passage for this morning, Jesus tells us that in order to follow him, we need to deny ourselves. At first hearing, that doesn't sound like good news. I've been thinking about it, though. And it occurs to me that a lot of the time we walk through life as if we are center stage, the star of our own play, with everyone else in the role of supporting actor, which makes for a lot of conflict, a lot of misunderstandings, and often a disconnect between who we are and who we want other people to be. What would it be like to deny self could that get us out of the hyper self-focus we sometimes find ourselves in? Now, the disciples wanted Jesus to be the star of their play, but they wanted to write the script. A script that brought honor and glory and victory to his name. And because they were his disciples, his life would bring honor and glory and victory to their lives. They wanted to follow him if it led to a better life than the one they were currently living. When Jesus says no and starts to talk about the kind of leadership he's really going to bring, they want him to be quiet. And that's when he gets everybody together to tell them his description of following him will be about denying themselves and taking up their cross. Maybe we need to back up for a minute and think about the other part of the sentence, taking up the cross. We know that the cross was an instrument of execution before Jesus came along, that it symbolizes the end, a horrible end. But what does the cross represent after Jesus? For us, the empty cross tells the story of God's desire to reach out to humanity, to be love in the face of sin and grace and forgiveness in the places we can't ever imagine being forgiven. The cross tells us death is not the end, that even when things look the worst they can possibly look, a new day is possible. We may try to live as if we are the star of our show, but inside we know that there are places we have made mistakes or made conscious bad decisions, and we're hungry for the good news that the love of God is still ours, that we still belong to God, that Jesus loves us so much he went to the cross to show us how deep that love flows. Lent is about a denial to self to make space for the love of God. It is about letting the brokenness that threatens our internal identity come to the surface in a way that invites our repentance, our turning toward God. 
Create in us a clean heart, O oh God. That is the message of what it means to deny self and turn toward the way of the cross, laying down the facade that we are all put together on our own. Letting in the love that we so desperately need and responding with a genuine thanksgiving for what the new day, the resurrection, the cross represents. Following Jesus means we get to give. We get to let love flow through us. We get to serve God, not by assuming we are victorious in the worldview, winning at life, but by following Jesus who stood next to people other people pushed out. Gentiles, children, the poor, the lame, the blind, the lepers, those were the people Jesus stood by, even though the script the people expected him to follow said he should fight a military fight and become king. We get to try our best to walk with Jesus, to do what he would have us do, to say what he would have us say, to be present in the places he calls us to be. In the words of Adam Hamilton in Half Truce, we get to listen to the nudges that come to us to reach out in some way and consider them holy nudges. Now, none of this is to say we'll never need forgiveness or grace again. There's a reason Lent comes every year. We need to be reminded to reflect on our lives, whether we've stayed as close to Jesus as we want to, and how we can remake space in us to create room for the love of Christ to come in. May we open our hearts this day to the work we need to do to let the Spirit make our hearts clean and point us in the direction of loving God with all that we are. And in losing the lives we have, we will find our lives saved. This is the good news. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Dear God, as we gather this day, we come to you with all kinds of things on our minds and on our hearts. We come to you with joys. We come to you with concerns. We come with people in our minds that we're praying for, people who need your healing touch. We come with grief. We come with a hunger for your love and company. We come trusting in you. Lord, in your mercy, we know that you hear our prayers and we lift up all that is on our hearts this day. We pray for peace in this world. We pray for new beginnings. We give you thanks that you walk with us every step of the way. Now let us pray together as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us go forward from this place, certain in our knowledge of the love of God, the peace of Christ Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 This is a song my friend Chuck Bradsky wrote. It's called, We Are Each Other's Angels. Well, I hope I see you later Because it's time for me to go That's my ride that just pulled over Sure was good to know you Now go answer your calling Go and fill somebody's cup And if you see an angel falling Won't you stop and help them up Cause we are each other's angels and we meet 
when it is time We keep each other going We show each other signs well, Sometimes you will stumble Sometimes you just lie down and Sometimes you will get lonely With all these people around You might shiver when the wind blows And you might get blown away You might lose a little color You might lose a little faith But we are each other's angels And we meet when it is time We keep each other going We show each other signs Thank you for the water Thought I was gonna die out here in the desert But you quenched my thirst Let's break a little bread together I got a little mama It was a gift From someone who was passing by And offered me a lift Now go answer your calling Go and fill somebody's cup If you see an angel falling Won't you stop and help them up Because we are each other's angels And we meet when it is time We keep each other going We show each other signs